this video we are going to look at Autogen Studio, how to create an agent, how to create a new workflow. So let's go ahead and get started. I've spun up a brand new container. I've gotten in the habit of just spinning up brand new uh, environments for Autogen Studio every time I use it because it's uh, updating so fast. Every time I come in, they've uh, made positive changes. But just since the overview video I did two days ago, the interface already looks different. You don't see workflows on the Playground page anymore. Now they are associated with a session. So when you create a session, you, know, you select the workflow when you create a session. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Build tab. When we create a session, we select a workflow. We don't select the agent. The agent is a way, it's, it's like a class. You get to save the properties of an agent, but you define the agent in the workflow. And you don't actually have to define an agent separate from workflow. The main reason is if you want to reuse a, a common agent type across multiple workflows. So let me go ahead and go into workflows and let's look at this new workflow dialog here. Again, in Autogen Studio, the primary limitation is that you have a really just two different agents that you can define. And your sender is going to be user proxy. And so you're really uh, looking at this one primary assistant or, or whatever you name this. Now, when I select, this is my agent. So if I actually click over the agents tab, you would see that I have an agent called primary assistant there already. And when I click on this, this is the same exact dialog here that you would use to create a new agent and so these are the same exact settings as my primary assistant agent but if I were to change these that doesn't change the agent itself it only changes the agent behavior that's associated with this workflow what the agent what defining an agent does is, is essentially is, is presets for all these you can see at the very bottom field here it says or replace with an existing agent. When I select an agent here, like if I click the user proxy, you'll see that all of these settings now match the same settings as if I went into the agents and, and I clicked on the user proxy agent. And again, if I were to adjust these here, it would not change the settings in my agent. It would only change in the workflow. Again, the, the purpose of having that agent is so that way I can have essentially a template of my agent settings that I can then come in and apply to my workflow. And, and when you do that, you want to make sure that you, you might need to re-toggle these to re every time you adjust this, there's like an on-click workflow or something in here that reapplies those settings. Let's uh, go ahead and I'm going to create a new agent. Exit out of here. When I create a new agent, and we'll just leave this sample assistant. You can see here I have two agents. I have a primary assistant and a user proxy already created. We don't have anything called sample assistant yet. I'm going to leave this to the default settings just to show you that these default settings have kind of like a significant flaw that you're going to want to change when you use Autogen. So let's leave this max consecutive auto reply as eight. And that, again, allows, when you ask a question, the agents are going to try to figure it out on your behalf. And they may go and think and reason and try actions amongst themselves. And uh, this uh, max consecutive controls that behavior so it can't get stuck in a perpetual forever loop trying to uh, resolve a question that it's struggling with or something. Human input mode, is, that is, you may ask the question to the agent. The agent may determine uh, a plan of action of what it wants to do or, or a next step or something like that. Do you want that agent to be able to come back and confirm with you? May may say something like, here's a plan, should I proceed? Something like that, right? And your options here are never, terminate, and always. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that default of never again, and I'll come back and add in a behavior. And you don't need to put a system message, right? You know, you can, you know, I'll just put something here. Now, the, the whole point of the system message is so that when you expose the chatbot interface to either to yourself or to the end user, ideally, you may want to have a behavior that they don't see, right? You might have a service that, that says, I'm going to talk to you like, like I'm a, a celebrity, you know, Elvis Presley or whatever random thing you put in there, or you could put things that are complex and intricate to, to change the behavior of how your chatbot experience will work. Uh, and here's a way for you to put instructions that are essentially behind the scenes so that way if someone comes and uses the, a chat interface that you expose, they wouldn't see this instruction. They would just ask a question like normally and as their question would get forwarded over to your LLM endpoint, the system here will kind of inject that in as a system message so that way when the LLM responds, it will know how to respond. And so we'll press OK. 
And now that we've got our agent, we can't use that agent until we apply it to a workflow. So let's go ahead and we'll create a new workflow. And we'll click the new workflow button. And see, so we'll just call this the sample agent workflow to match the name of the assistant. Doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and see here that by default it's going to load this primary assistant and I want to go ahead and change the settings here to the sample assistant. Now do keep in mind, you see here that at the this field where I can load the settings for the sample assistant, by default right now it's going to display the last, the most recent assistant that I created in this field. But you'll notice those aren't the settings that are actually applied here. And that's kind of something with the code that you fix. This doesn't apply your settings from an existing agent unless there's an on-click action here. So you need to toggle back to primary assistant. Whatever it shows up as default, it may not, unless it's a primary assistant, is that's what's going to load in this uh, the settings. And uh, if it's showing something here like it did, a sample assistant, uh, you'll need to like switch to something else and then switch back in order to have the on-click action ensure that your fields get filled out. Now you'll see that these are the same settings that I have associated with that agent. I can click OK and click OK again to create this sample agent workflow. And now the workflow is created. I can go back into Playground and we'll see here if I click uh, New Session, we'll create it with that new workflow we just created. Now we'll ask a question. It doesn't matter what I ask right now. I'm just trying to show that it works here and how it works specifically. You can see here it's thinking. I'll give it a second. Now, if you have done this in Visual Studio Code, you can see what's happening behind the scenes while the question is uh, being asked. Now, that was the question answered. And you can also see all these messages once the question is completely answered it will show in the browser but some of these times these will take long so it's useful if you're running it in a container or something in my case I'm running it on uh, Tanzi Kubernetes grid I can look over into my container terminal and see what's happening in real time so now yeah here I mentioned before there's some default behavior with these agents that is is undesirable right and so we ask the question, how are you doing today? The great thing about agents, right, is when you ask a complicated question, it can sit there and think and come up with a plan and, and you can do a lot of back and forth in order to make it easier to get your question answered or to be able to have, have the agent be able to answer more complex questions. But I didn't ask a complex question. I just said, how are you doing today? And it said eight messages. So we can see here, user proxy, proxied our message, how are you doing today? And, of course, our sample assistant. This is a call to our GPT-4. And when it comes back to user proxy, what did user proxy say? Nothing. Why did, well, because that's what we set it to say. We said you can go back and talk to user proxy eight times. You know, notice there's eight messages. And we said don't ask human. Another option was to terminate. That allows their user proxy to kind of automatically insert a terminate message. We didn't select that. We left the default setting of never. So it's not going to interrupt us, and it's not going to terminate the flow. And so it just loops, and it sends another call to, to open API, and another call. You could see that it's confusing for the system, because it's sending the call to open AI or your LLM multiple times, and it's not sure why, because it's getting back nothing from you. And so it's trying to guess what you're doing. It's confused. And then the ultimate response that comes back might end up being confused as well. In this case, we saw here nothing. It didn't, it didn't come back with anything because it, it confused everything. And, uh, and so that was the sample, but let's just go ahead and let's just try that again with the default. So um, the default agent right now, let's say this general agent workflow. Let's see what happens if those settings are any better or not. So the general agent workflow, let's see if we say, how are you doing today? Now, you can see the general agent workflow actually um, handled it no problem. And uh, you can see here, terminate. And so now if we go into the settings for the general agent workflow, let's go, let's go ahead and go to the general agent itself. If you look at the workflow, but it'll use this primary assistant. Interestingly, it still has the same auto reply and it still has the same human input mode, never. And so how it deals with terminate messages is addressed here in the prompt. 
So you can see here, the summary must end with the word terminate. So it's going to say, you know, take the question, try to summarize or improve on the question that the user submitted, and, and then add the word terminate. And by adding the word terminate, that signals the, the loop to end. And so on one hand, you could utilize the terminate here. And that's going to, imp you may not want it to always insert the word terminate. So you, it, it's kind of a good practice to put it in top prompt if that's working. You could set it to always ask you. So you can decide as the user interactively if you want it to continue to proceed or uh, handle it in the prompt. And usually handling it in the prompt gives you the most flexibility, but it's also a little bit more nuanced, right? Because if you want it to issue a terminate message under certain conditions, you're going to have to test that. A good place to get started, right, is to do similar to the defaults. There's also a number of notebooks on the Autogen site, as well as you can use agents outside of Autogen also have the system message context. So whether you're doing something on OpenAI or whether you're doing something with all these other, with a lot of different frameworks, they all have this kind of similar system message prompts. And so there's a lot of different references and examples and best practices that you can find about how to create optimal system message prompts that help to control for behaviors. Okay, and I think that's it for this video. I'm going to make a separate follow-on video where we'll look at uh, plugging in open source models. So hope to see you then. Thank you.